National Women's Day, their protest was around the bills that were uh, linked to the constitutional amendment last week that the House of Reps and the Senate rejected. And the women said it was biased, it was, uh, it was, it, it was ill-informed, and so they decided to hit the streets. And the lawmakers, true to form, said they are going to review three of those bills, one with uh, affirmative action, 35%, the others with indi indigenous and citizenship rights. And it will be great to hear what the women think about it, even though a number of people think it's sort of knee-jerk reaction to get the women off um, the streets and make them look like they're doing stuff. But we have at least one week to see whether the National Assembly will be true to its words and indeed make a reversal on those, um, some have said, embarrassing uh, voting for those bills which were supposed to increase women participation in leadership as well as in politics especially. Dr. Hilda Desmond is the coordinator of Africa Women Lawyers Association, the River State Chapter. Where do you have you join us, Dr. Desmond? Good morning, sir. Pleased to be with you. Excellent. And if you probably will say that um, there's never been a more productive uh, International Women's Day, the Nigerian version, than what happened yesterday, I probably wouldn't be far from the truth. The National Assembly is listening to the women and says they are going to have a second look at three of those bills that were regrettably rejected last week during the constitutional amendment. But let's get your reaction to those, uh, to the events that played out uh, yesterday. Yes, it's a very welcome development that the House of Representatives under the leadership of uh, Baj Amila has decided to rescind his decision to reject those three gender bills. Actually, they really actually listen to good sense because those three bills are in a cause bill. There is uh, nothing wrong with uh, making it possible for a, a woman to confer citizenship on her foreign husband or for somebody who is married to a particular place to be able to acquire indigenship of that particular place. So that for the purposes of either a, a, a polit political position, so that the woman will also have a place because ordinarily before, before now, a woman does not have uh, rights, certain rights in her place of birth. When it comes to you know, the, the issue of federal character or, or giving a particular concession, they will tell the woman that you should go to your husband's house. When she goes to her husband's house, she's also referred back you know, to where she comes from. So, and also giving uh, the issue of 35 for uh, affirmative action, it has really, it has really, it's really very important because it was really very embarrassing. Um, considering the theme for this uh, year's uh, International Women's Day, which is gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow, so it, it, you know it was really embarrassing to Nigeria because the United has even said that the 22 International Women's Day is if pivotal to achieving goal five of uh, United Nations, which is a uh, gender equality. And if you see the uh, hashtag, break the bias. So for Nigeria, which is part of the Committee of uh, Nations, to do something to the contrary is ordinarily embarrassing. But thank God that uh, the our House of Fred make, made the vote face and is ready that that bill. So I will say that uh, this year's uh, International Women's Day is a very great one because the women, all the civil society groups, especially those that uh, it has to do with the protection of the rights and women, actually achieved uh, what they needed by uh, making the house, you know, agree. In fact, there was even a motion at the house, uh, you know, uh, insisting that uh, 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 accepted that that bill will be reconsidered in the next sitting. And I want to believe that uh, those in the House of Reps are honorable men, that they will stick to their words by actually revising this you know, cost bill and make sure it is being passed so there will not be a laughing stock the, in, the, in the Committee of Nations. The future is female. And Nigeria, and like all other countries that relegate really women to the background, or they don't allow them to bring in what they have, they really have a lot to, a lot to lose. Take, for instance, uh, let me not go far. Let us take uh, people like our own Dora Kunyile or Bia Ezekwesele. Look at the innovation and the things they're able to bring in to the areas they were given. If women are not giving, if gender bias is making women not to be given such an opportunity, you know, would have lost all that. So it's a, it's a very good development. And I want to say that this International Women's Day actually has achieved the, uh, a lot if at the end of the day they will 
stick to their words and pass these uh, uh, these uh, gender bills that are really you know cost. You know, we just need it to be given the constitutional backing. Trust and the lawmakers are true to their word that they will indeed pass uh, those bills next week when they have the voting happen again. Help us um, understand, because I know a number of people, when you say laughing stock, really don't understand. And, but I'm sure with, with the events that have played out yesterday and the coverage, people suddenly having a second look at the issue of women's participation in political leadership in this country. Only eight countries in sub-Saharan in, in, in the world have worst representation of women in parliament. Shows us the lower, lower, lower rungs of, la of, of the ladder of political leadership globally, which is not where you should expect Africa's number one nation in population size uh, to be. But just to reiterate why it's important, help our viewers understand why we need to have women, sizable number of women in political positions of leadership, why is this necessary? Yes, it's necessary because the future is female. You know, when I say the future is female -less. Uh, the females in Nigeria or the female gender in Nigeria has long been relegated to the background and statistics has shown that women all the world over, even in Nigeria have the same level of intelligence and understanding and have a lot to offer like their male uh, counterparts. So any society that is regret, uh, relegating women to the uh, background not allowing them to bring in their God-given potential and that touch you know, that makes them make wherever uh, position you put them for them to succeed. You know, you will be robbing ourselves. It's like we are robbing, uh, we will be robbing ourselves a lot. You know, in fact, the world have even come to under, understand that, you know, not giving women position is like, you know, living your life a uh, uh, half circle. That is why if you see uh, like uh, some states like California, they have even made it that uh, there was a time they passed a bill that for any public traded company, you know, there has to be a woman on the board. You know, these are uh, 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 other clients that are doing well that we should be, we should be emulating what they are doing. You know, Nigeria is still the giant of Africa. So, you know, for us to to be in that level like when it comes to women participation, it, 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 we're, not, we're supposed to be leading. We're supposed to show other African countries how things ought to be. You know, and so it's very important that we do that. So that at the end of the day, we find out that we don't use our hands to rob ourselves of the great potentials we have in so many Nigerian uh, women. You know, I know that uh, it will not be easy for uh, some uh, some of uh, the, uh, the men in the House of Assembly to really uh, ascend to this bill. But what they have to understand is that, you know, we when you deprive a woman of opportunity of participating uh, in the in the political sphere, you know those areas that ordinarily they would do well in. You know, you you rob yourself of the things ordinarily you're supposed to gain from those things. So what the, some of the things these gender bills and you know even our constitution, if you look at it, France against discrimination. You know, and if you discriminate against a woman on the basis of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, her God-given gender. You know, it means you're actually not even living up to that uh, constitution. And, and it, it does strike at the heart of the matter where you talk about the relationship between the women in political mm -hmm. leadership because it's inclusivity, you know. If you have women uh, make those decisions, they probably will, uh, most likely, will have the women-related matters included in the policy when it's formulated. And, I mean, if you have a population of 100% uh, 50, 50 men and women. It doesn't make sense to have only men speak while the women are silent on those issues. It's an unfair representation of reality. But help us understand also too, you, you're a, a woman leader in River State, and we've talked politics. There's also the social cultural aspect, uh, which involves the citizenship and um, the uh, uh, indigenous rights aspect of the bills, for example, which will be considered by the House of Reps. In your capacity, do you view the world in River State, for example, a more fair place where uh, the rights of women are being I, talked, in your view, right? Uh, where, where the rights of women are yes. being talked about. Yes. Is it, the, is it fairer now than it, what, what it used to be in the past?
All right, we're, we're trying to get back um, uh, to Dr. Hilda there. We have some disruption with the network. Um, once we can get back to her, we can get her viewpoint on her experience as a woman leader in River State, uh, just exactly whether the picture is a lot fairer for them than it was in the past. Because if you follow the discussion, you see that we've had discussions move from the politics where we want more representation of women, because that, like I said, strikes at the hat of the matter, which is inclusivity. Political decisions and policies which don't include women matters in them oftentimes uh, don't take the women issues into consideration. Uh, no fault to the men. They simply don't understand it the way a woman understands it. It's why, for example, we had uh, the, the people with disability bill, for example, which was to include the people with disability in every aspect of policy making to make sure it represents the, the 27 million or thereabout people who are with disabilities. The same thing we're trying to do with the women and those bills which, uh, which we talk about striking at uh, the political, which we're having a discussion around today, social cultural also part of what we're talking about. Yesterday we talked about the economic um, uh, biases. So, Dr. Hilda, great to have you back again. Okay, thank you. Right. Let me say that uh, in River State, there is, a, 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 there is progress, at least in one area. I remember that uh, African Women Lawyers Association was invited uh, last, some a year plus now during the consideration of the violence against persons prohibition law of river state and we made a lot of representation to uh, include some you know gender sensitive uh, issues on that violence against a persons prohibition uh, act law and by the time the violence against a persons prohibition law came in there were a lot of uh, things that we are taking care of then in that law alone the issue of uh, uh, dehumanizing widows was made a crime. The issue of uh, forced economic uh, dependence was made a, a, a crime. Although there are other aspects of that bill that also, because it's person, it's not only women, but there were a lot of gender friendly bills. You know, so in River State, we are not doing badly. With the passage of the Violence Against a, a Persons Prohibition Act, like for, something like forceful ejection from home is also taken care of uh, in that uh, bill. I'm also aware there is a bill in the House now, in the River State House of uh, Assembly, seeking to make it possible for women to inherit property in their husband's uh, house. You know that politics we are talking about, non-inheritance of property, especially land from families, is one of the reasons why women are still kept behind political energy. You know that for you to be able to do politics, it's not about money, but you need money to start. You need money to even have a balanced mindset for you to even structure, you know. And we know that a woman who does not have land, which is the main letter, so that a woman will be able to go into full-time business. So being denied of landed property, except the woman who is lucky to buy on her own, but ordinarily from the home, you cannot uh, inherit. That, despite the uh, judicial pronounce, uh, pronouncements to the contrary, so if that how if the house also passes that bill, it will go a long way to help women in clearly. But let me also so like I said yesterday in my interview at uh, Nigerian, that there's one thing that's good in River State, at least is a starting point, even though it does not solve all the problem. There is a, a woman is a deputy governor in River State. Also, all the vice chairmen of all the local governments in River State are women. And believe you me, I'm telling you from records that have interacted. Since women became a vice chairman in local government, that is the only time I have ever heard the name of a woman that is a vice chairman and that she has this program or that program for the woman. You know, it's not good to shave somebody's head at the back. If when women are in the position where decisions are made concerning them, they will be able to make more inputs. You understand? So it's not El Dorado yet in River State, and we've not gotten there. But I know that if other states, or even, even if the House of Representatives have even taken a clue from what has happened in River State, even the advice will always take instructions from the what uh, from the chairman. You know, she doesn't have so many statutory rules. But if the House of Reps, or even our Senate, has taken a cue from what has happened in River State, they would have made it, you know, they would have even not allowed to talk about it. Uh, they would have voted in favor of the 35% affirmative action. And believe you me, we are not saying because we are women to dash us the positions. A few persons I know I can call who are vice chairmen. They are women of no mean feet. They are women who have made impact in different areas. So we are not saying because we are women we should not be qualified. 
but let that position be created as a client. The United Nations has said it took us 108 years to bridge gender gap. You understand? So it didn't, it, 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 it's not as if it has never happened in other countries, even in civilized plan, but they have realized that there is that gender gap due to the suppression of women over the years, which means there is need for them to be given an advantage so that they can a, a, a compete equally with the men. There will be a level playing ground. We are not saying because we are women, we should just sit down. Or women who are, 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 you know, are not, uh, have not uh, uh, found their onion in the areas of their professional skills should come and become uh, uh, politicians or should come and rule us. You know, but let's be disadvantaged. We've been, just like we have been handicapped, we have been disadvantaged for so long. So there is need to do something to make it possible or uh, provide, uh, you know, loans. Um, um, uh, there are so many areas. Okay, let me tell you, for instance, right. a window. We know that it's especially some in the south, even right. it happens in River State, right. in some clans, yeah. You know that most times widows are disinherited. Mm -hmm. Widows are disinherited. In all our rivers, we have a special project with Obilulu Bricks Foundation to provide free legal art device right. and services to right. widows. And we've heard a lot. You see right. that a woman is absolutely. broken, they suffer mental absolutely issues, you know, because of the accusation. So but, how is such a and, woman and I must, be able we, we to must gather herself, to right. be able to compete? Very, very, very true, and we must commend you because every time we bring you in here, we realize the great work you're doing with uh, widows and how uh, we're trying to make sure that th those injustices, which have been documented for several years, is uh, drastically dealt with. Um, help us understand, and I want you to weigh in on this because it's a, it's an argument or line of thought. Even when we throw open the phone lines and we have discussions about increased representation of women in government, I, I have an idea. I know very well what the answer is, but. I'd love to hear from your point of view when many men say, look, we're running to the 2023 general elections. We have more women voting the elections than the men. And this has happened election cycle after election cycle. So the women are more in the numbers. And they say, why can't the women gather themselves together in groups and block vote en masse the men who have, for example, not allowed them to be able to express themselves uh, women come together in a group and say, we are going to vote for this particular woman, and that way they can have a stronger representation. Is it as easy on the eye for women to come together and have their say uh, in this sort of uh, 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 political matters? The truth is that uh, because of our cultural and religious be beliefs and mindsets, you know, it's not if the women don't vote. There is only, there, you know, there is this suppression of mindset to say it's always men that will do it better. You know, so you know, we need. That's why we we keep on advocating. We go on advocacy to make sure that we change that in ingrained mindset, which is as a result of our patriarchal nature and because of our religious belief that a man must be at the head. Also, uh, I want to also say that we also need men for this to happen. Because so many men will not agree, because some men believe that the rise of uh, 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 women is the fall of my, uh, 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 men. No, the rise of women is not the fall of men. But even the women themselves, we are mentoring. Let me give you for an instance what we are doing in all our rivers here. We are mentoring uh, students from law students of University of Portacourt. Each time we have program on gender issues and gender sensitive matters, we are mentoring them. So it will be difficult for a law student from Uniport who is under our, who is our main, have that mindset that she is inferior or that she is less or she will not achieve a particular potential. We also mentoring a, a law uh, undergraduate from uh, River State uh, University of Science and uh, Technology, you know. Each time we have program, we will take time. We've, in fact, we went ahead to open what we call a sexual harassment help desk in the River State University. So it will be difficult for a law student in River State University to succumb to any sexual harassment because they know that we are there. We have their backing. We are mentoring them. In fact, during last year's uh, International Day of the Girl Child, we were with them with the faculty. And at the end of the day, the team for last year was the uh, digital generation, our generation. They talked about, you know, it was about trying to bridge the a digital gap. And we noticed that some students in that school didn't have an Android phone. And being an, an, without an Android phone in today's classroom that has gone digital is as good as not coming with a pen 
and the paper. We were able to empower two students of that school, two law faculty students, you know, the ones who didn't have Android phone. So that way, you know, train not just to talk, but we walk our talk from rhetoric to action, I call it. So that way, these uh, law students, these young undergraduates, they have already, their mindset has already been changed because all this issue of gender bias is from the home. From the home, uh, our mothers, including ourselves, will say, ah, don't you know you're a woman? You don't talk when the man is talking. You send the boy child to go and play football. You tell the girl to go and do the dishes. You, the boy expresses emotion. You say, don't you know you are a man? You're not supposed to. The girl uh, cuddles uh, Teddy and cries, and you placate the girl. You're already beginning to tell the boy that the boy is a, a superior to the girl. And this is the boy you're sending into society. You're sending him to go out to the house of friends. He already has a mindset that the place of the woman is in the other room and not in the politics and not in the in the in politics. Uh, it's for, for her is to cook and clean. So from the home, uh, these uh, girls you are mentoring, they have already known that both their girl child and right. their boy uh, child will do both roles, and that they are no more intelligent than the men. All right, we're going we're to have to. We are going to be men. Right, we're going to have to leave it at that, uh, Dr. Hilda Williams. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And um, we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope that um, with the National Assembly going to vote again on this bills by next week, we'll have a, a different story. We'll come back and touch base with you again and see uh, what, we have, what we have learned. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, from the International Women's Day and the successes there, we're going to cross over to Ukraine and find out what is happening. A lot has happened since the last time we spoke, spoke with Blessing and Mubusa. We'll come back, we can talk some more about that. Please stay with us on News Hub. <laughs>